everybody, it is Romania Black, and we are on episode 10 of Free Ren Beyond Journey's End. Mm. <laughs> and Huckleberry has joined us. Huckleberry's joined us, as you can see here. Are you excited to see some elves kick some ass? <laughs> no, he's like, bitch, where's my toy? So, yeah. I'm really excited about this episode. Uh, the last two episodes have been amazing, amazing. And I'm really excited to see uh, what is in store with us for this one. But I've got some comments before we start to kind of go over and run through y'all with. Um, I, I laughed so hard with Andrew Lucas Chisholm, your comment. I think it was for episode seven, but they were like, yeah, free run with the demons, like with um, Draught and the other ones are basically like, yeah, F around and find out. <laughs> This granny is ready to kick some ass and she's not going, she's, you know, she's here to do two things. She's here to chew bubble gum and kick ass and she's all out of bubble gum. So what can we do? <laughs> I love it. Um, I also love that both Xander1896 as well as Chun T Kyo uh, 6309 both talked about how the title of this entire series, the manga and the anime of Free Ren, the title in Japanese doesn't actually translate to Beyond Journey's End. They just, it sounds like a nice little, uh, you know, nice little family friendly title for your manga and anime. But the actual Japanese title translates to either um, Free Rent at the Funeral, which could be everyone's funerals, right? Not just her friends, but the demons as well. And also Free Rent the Undertaker. And I'm like, damn, that, like both those titles sound a lot more dark, sinister, and macabre than just Free Rend Beyond Journey's End. <laughs> it's like instead of rainbows, it's storm clouds. But you know, I am glad that they went with Beyond Journey's End, not only because thematically I think it fits better, but also it's been such a great, not necessarily surprise, because I think we all kind of knew Free Rend had this in her to be a badass, but it is a nice like little reveal along the way that Free Rend is more than what she seems on the surface. And I like the show is slowly revealing that to us. But yeah, what a crazy, I like Free Rent at the, Free Rent the Undertaker sounds a little too generic. It's kind of like how many, I mean, how many Shonen and stuff we've read that's been like, like something the unhinged, something the crazy or something the dark and sinister. Free Rent at the Funeral is such a great play on words because it could be talking about like at her friend's funerals, like Himmel and haters, or it could be talking about the demons. So you can kind of look at it through multiple uh, viewpoints. But I like Beyond Journey's End. I think that one's my favorite. And then Free Rent at the Funeral would be my, my close second. But thank you. And then finally, um, K.A. talked about, obviously, Suave is Lugner's voice actor. How could we not know? But um, Lindley's voice actress is um, actually more of a rookie voice actress, but she also played Toru Honda in the new 2019 uh, update of Fruits Basket, which is great. And then Graf's voice actor, he had a bunch of other roles, like he's been in Bleach, he's been in some other things, but he was um, Edamura's father in The Great Pretender, which I thought was noteworthy. So, cool. But yeah, I got the animation last episode. Oh, oh, my heart just mwah, mwah, accolades. Just I could I could sing it praises. I could sing its praises for for a good long time. It was just that good. I loved it so much. And I'm ready to see. We believe that she's going to be facing Aura now. We Lugner and and Lugler, bleh, Lugner and uh, Lindley and Drott are gone. I think Stark and Fern are going to be out of commission for a little bit. I don't think they're going to be helping. I don't think they'll be helping Free Run face Aura, but I don't think they're going to need to help Free Run face Aura, honestly. We'll just have to see what that battle looks like. But we're not going to waste any more time. We are going to dive right in and see what we get. We're going to start episode 10 of Free Run Beyond Journey's End. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's uh, go. Oh, oh, I love the show. <laughs> the show is so good. Oh, again, again, it's just like the show decides to have this ambiance and this subtle style. And even when it's doing this big bombastic music and battle, it's like, you know what? No, we're going to stick to our guns. You're just going to have to trust us. And Free Rin is just the definition of a stone cold badass. Like she could have shown off and done so much, but she was like, no, no. My mage taught me well. And I was like, ah, I didn't know if I wanted to bring Whiteboard Coon out. 
a part of me feels like if I brought White Bird out, I'd write like three words on him and he might as well deserve a break in all of this, but we need to talk about this. So Flom, um, Flom is a lot more interesting than I originally, um, anticipated. Flom, Flom is so interesting. Flom very much is like female Gojo from, from Jujutsu Kaisen. Flom is basically like, she's just so, she's such a troll in some ways with how we've seen her portrayed back in previous episodes. But then you see her in this one, you're like, no, she's really kind hearted. She's really smart. She also is kind of like, I like the idea the show is doing of embracing like your cowardice and using it as an advantage because we've seen with Stark and Ison the idea of using cowardice to find a way to control fear and transform that fear into power. And then with Flom, it's this idea of, yeah, I'm going to hide my mana. Is that shameful? Don't care. I don't want to die by demons. And for her to say, yeah, I'm going to look like a coward, but it's going to come in handy when I want to stop demon kind. And this is the... The, this is the links I'm willing to go to stop demons. And that's even if it's degrade myself amongst other mages and how they view me, I'll take it. If that's what it takes, sure, I'll do it. And I'm like, go Flom. But so Basalt, we have Basalt was the, the demon that basically wrecked, that wrecked her uh, entire village which we'll talk about and she says do you remember his last words and Freeman's like no and she's like good because their kind only uses words to deceive humans and she's like that's why they're so dangerous I like that uh Freeran has the same hairstyle as Fern like the same little down hairstyle she it, what's curious is it seems like she upgraded her fashion to what it is now when she met Himmel and the others which is so fascinating to me. She's not been running around with that same pinstripe shirt. It was only after, I feel like Himmel took on her, took her on a shopping spree and was like, yes, girl, you look amazing. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and then just, you know, stuck with it after all this time. We'll talk about Himmel and, and Hyder and the others, but they don't play fair. So we must be even more unfair. I love that. I love the concept being like to fight monster. It's what's interesting about it is it's this really cool, play on to fight monsters you have to become a monster it's it's kind of a play on that but it works usually in most series that i've watched the whole to become a mon to fight a monster you have to become a monster it's viewed negatively because in those scenarios both sides fighting are human and they shouldn't be fighting at all. That's the thing, right? In those stories, and I was kind of trying to say this back when we first met Lugner and them, in those stories where it's humans versus humans, it's stupid because why should humans be fighting one another? They're both the same species. They're both consuming the same things. There is no predator-prey relationship. They're all one kind. But here, where you do have a predator and prey relationship, it's, you know, eat or be eaten, it, it does make sense to say if we're going to fight fire, we need to have a bigger fire to be able to fight them. We need to deceive those that would deceive us. And I'm like, that's so freaking cool. And so if it allows me to exterminate demon kind, I'll embrace this dishonor. Yeah, Flom's like, I don't even care. The crazy thing is, is that Flom is basically this modern day Prometheus for humanity using magic. And Flom isn't, is just treated as a legend, like isn't even treated as a real person at this point. They're just legendary. I love the advice they give Free Ren to say, you need to hide. You don't need to let them know who you are. You need to be like a shadow, be invisible, which now looking back, it's like every town they went to where Himmel was like demanding that they commission all these statues. You can just see Free Ren in the background being like, this is not what Flom wanted us to do. <laughs> supposed to be incognito not plastering our faces everywhere but to be fair flom did say after you defeat the demon king then you can plaster your face everywhere and it's fine but here's the thing we already know that was 80 years ago and aura she makes known that she's like yeah the demons paid attention the demons were like oh you're the elf mage that killed the demon king and helped the other hero party to do it. We're going to know about you and train to face you. So just in that one, now granted, I say in that one mission, it literally was killing the demon king. <laughs> like the big objective Flom laid out, you know, a thousand years prior. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, that makes sense. 
the crazy thing about all of this is that, you know, from the way that Flom talks, defeating the Demon King is a big deal. That's like a huge end all be all mission. And you have Hater and Ison and Himmel and them coming back to the palace, watching fireworks, drinking a beer, being like, oh, well, that was a fun mission. I'm like, that should have been the end all be all. What? 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 They, they make it sound like it was so easy. And we know it probably wasn't, but from what we know of them facing the Demon King, it feels like they didn't struggle a lot. <laughs> it feels like they didn't have much to worry about. And, you know, the way Flom talks, it seems like it was a big deal. However, and, you know, with that being said, the question becomes, you know, was the Demon King and their powers compared to Flom's and Freerin's a thousand years ago? Was it kind of like the Zoltrak thing with a uh, qual? where, you know, years and years ago, Qual's use of Zoltrak was like an instant death, most feared thing. And now it's nothing. Now it's just like, oh yeah, this is ordinary magic. It's not this end all be all. So did the Demon King eventually just like not advance like Freerun and them had? And then when they finally faced him, it was like, yeah, we finally just destroyed him. But it wasn't as hard as it would have been a thousand years ago. That could be. That could be the case. We don't know for sure. But it just, it's always floored me from the beginning how like Hater and all of them just seem like, oh, we defeated the Demon King. That was it. That was all. And, you know, now looking back, Flom and the Fremen is such like a big deal. So that's interesting. I really thought that Lugner would be dead from the onset, but he lives just long enough for some exposition to happen and for Fern to like, exposit why he was defeated because he I love he has this little kind of badger face at one point where he's like and the animation on Lugner is really good because he's sitting there trying to reconcile and trying to think about like how did she beat me what is this and he looks kind of like an animal like he's just like mm, I don't know how you did that and then she explains he's like oh that would make sense and then she like evaporates him right I like that Fern defends Free Run saying like she would never she would never engage directly against a demon. And and Fern knows from learning from Freerun. I like that Flom a thousand years ago was basically saying it would just be the two of them. It almost has kind of like a, not even Jedi Master, but more like almost a Sith Apprentice sort of situation where you have the Sith Lord and the Apprentice and there's only two and that's all there can be. And I'm saying that as if Siths were a good thing in this world, the mages. Which could kind of be like Jedi, I guess you could say it's the same thing. But uh, I get that impression, whereas you had Flom and Freerun, and now you have Freerun and Fern, right? Although, in this situation, it seems like Freerun would outlive Fern, so I don't know how that's going to go. She's going to trick... I like when Fern says she's going to trick Aura and kill her, and... Lugner's trying to like rationalize how that's going to happen saying well she always attacked us directly and now looking back on it it's like Himmel kind of got on to her for attacking the demons directly so I wonder if Himmel was like didn't you tell me your master said not to do this why are you doing this and maybe Freerun was doing it because Himmel was in trouble and she wanted to keep the party safe and, you know, thinking back, Freerun's only ever, up until meeting all of them, she had only ever defended herself. So now that she's in this party having to defend them, there's more to worry about. And even though Freerun on the surface wouldn't let those emotions show, she's still feeling them. So maybe that's why she got kind of like panicked and directly attacked. And the him was like, don't do that. And she's like, fine, you're hot. I'll listen. But <laughs> so then, yeah. He figures out the trick that Freerun has taught Fern and is like, you're a disgrace to all mages. And Fern's like, Freerun knows better than anyone. I love that Freerun's told her this. And then she takes out Lugner and he's gone. Meanwhile, Stark's like in a puddle over there. Someone just like, <laughs> just like drowning in his own blood <laughs> as Lenny is gone. You know, they don't even mention her. So we go to this village, this elf village, thousand years ago. And they even have like little hobbit. It looks like the Shire. They have like little hobbit holes, like little underground houses. And Flom discovers it and it's like, what a dreadful sight. And then we see it's an elf village. So what's interesting is Freerun talks about how they're not particularly romantic and they're just slowly asexually wiping themselves out of extinction. Um, but here we see a village. We see a village where uh, the way that Freerun talked a few episodes ago, it makes it sound like they're all loners. But here there is a village. It seemed like there was, you know, some form of camaraderie there. 
and they were teaching uh, Free Run to be a mage because she has a little staff even back then. So interesting. What's curious too is the Demon King wants all of the elves wiped out. I'm very curious now. We don't get to see what the Demon King looked like when they faced him. But now I'm curious that elf that's in the OP, what their deal is. If they're like, the demons are trying to kill us. I instantly thought that the elf was trying to order, you know, their own kind to be destroyed. Because they're like, get, get rid of them all. But I don't know what to make of that. I'm very curious about the elves that we see in the OP. If we're going to find stuff out about them. We're only on episode 10 and we've got 28 episodes. So there's plenty of time to find that out. But I just, I, Free Run literally gets... Free Ren literally gets the Luke Skywalker treatment and Flom is Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> That's literally what happens. Flom shows up as uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru are burning in their cottage and is like, hey, Luke, you want to come out and ditch this place and go, you know, go fight the, the darkness of the Sith? And Luke's like, sure. And that's basically what happens with Free Ren here. She just, Flom shows up and takes Free Ren away because, yeah, you just see all these elves their poor corpses lying about. And then Basalt the Throne. Interesting. A general of the Demon King's army. And he was de he was defeated by Freerun, who nearly died in the process. This poor little elven girl. I like that Flom and Freerun's eyes are the same color. That's interesting. I like that. I wonder, if, curiously, if that's a thing. And she sees how much aura that Freerun has. Or mana. Mana. She has mana. A lot of it. Okay, so the swing set. We see the swing. So we see Freerun when she looks at that swing in the in the flashback. That this is what it was referring to. Okay. Oh my God! I'm just now seeing a uh, basalt the throne's sword. It is twice as tall as Flom is. Berserk, be damned! <laughs> I was like, oh. Th this was a very big demon. I like how the demons in this time period dress in knight armor as well, so you can't see their form. It's almost like they're trying to just imitate the outer shell of a human, which symbolically is pretty cool to represent. They're just symbolizing the, the outer shell of a human, but that's not what's within, you know? But now we understand why Free Ren hates the demons so much. They killed her family and destroyed her home. And then she got picked up and kidnapped by this human mage and forced into a life of apprenticehood, of apprenticeship. Yeah. She's like, what a fool you are. I, just, I love Flom's kind of attitude. Flom is insanely strong and powerful, but she gives off the Obi-Wan Kenobi vibes where she's like, run, hide, then take your enemies by surprise. Don't just run in guns a-blazing. You'll get sniped out. You gotta, you gotta be the sniper. Don't be sniped out. You snipe them. And then ends up taking her in, right? I love it. And then she's like, there are plenty of other options. And I like that Freerun recognizes her as a powerful mage. Mm -hmm. I like that we've seen kind of the evolution of her mana. It's just a circle at the beginning and then it just expands into this explosion of energy. Now, here's the thing. Aura, I'm sure, could sense that Qual had been destroyed. And now Aura has been destroyed. So there's five, as far as we know, there are five Sages of Destruction left. Um, and have they crowned a new Demon King? I don't know. Flom made the comment that she's glad that Freerun wasn't a demon. So I'm like, can elves be the Demon King? Can that one in the, the, in the OP be it? I don't know. I love Flom's face there where she takes her in. That little smirk that she has. Love it. And then she takes Freerun in. And asks her her name. Now, I want I want to talk about the designs of the demons that come out here. Because as Flom and they're walking through the forest, she's like, you have potential, you're going to become my apprentice. And she's like, you know, you nearly died trying to protect your village. I need to help you to make sure that doesn't happen again. But I love the designs. I wish they'd lived longer. I thought the designs of these, like, demon generals were so freaking cool. Like, they have the armor, and then they have, like, the horns coming out, and, like, the mask and everything. The one looked really cool. Now, the the one armor there has the sword with the, the wings coming off of it. That's kind of the same armor that Himmel has, correct? Or it's the emblem that Himmel has, right? So is there some continuity there that... 
the kingdom that I'm assuming that this demon, that these demons that have the random armor on just stole them from humans and compiled them all together. Um, so is this emblem with the sword and the, like the light, the mana, it almost looks like mana coming off as angel wings from it. It's the same symbol that's on Himmel's uh, brooch. So I wonder if even after a thousand years, if it's still the same lineage. Interesting. Or maybe it's just a random design that they just replicate. And then, yeah, they all have staffs like mages, which is pretty cool. And then one has like a, um, it looks like the plague doctor mask. And like the moment they realize they're mages, they stepped out in the open because they could sense their mana and thought that they could overtake them. And she's like, they have a rid ridiculous sense of pride when it comes to magic. I like the idea that they basically, they pride magic so much and they view it in such high regard that the idea of restraining it or the idea of concealing it, it makes no sense to them. They're like, well, why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. And talking about how wealth and status give a class in humanity, whereas mana gives a class in demon kind. It's interesting. There, there are surprisingly some similarities there that make the demons more than just velociraptors. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a very big distinction between the humans and the demons, right? In the end, the demons are monsters just imitating humans. What's interesting is that the demon, the demon king wanted all of the elves to be killed. My theory behind that is that because the elves live so long and probably have a naturally high mana, then if they all became mages, they could destroy all the demons and that would be a major threat because i mean if you think about it the demons have the advantage over humanity in that they live a long time aura was over 500 years old so they can outlive humans so naturally they're not so afraid of human mages because eventually they'll just outlive them but an elf that might be harder to outlive so maybe not and free run doesn't look old at all so hmm i do love though that flom's like yes i am a powerful mage but I'm only going to show this off once. They're stupidly proud and overconfident. And then she just blipped them off of, you know, just popped them out, you know, like you do. I'm like, oh, so Flom is really, really powerful. The thing about it is, is I would love to know like where Flom gets, because we see her aura in an instant. We see how, how strong it is. It's basically like free runs when she faced aura. Free runs may even be bigger than Flom's. Um, but I know that there's a part of me that wants to know Flom's backstory, like who taught Flom, who did that. But then you kind of are creating this endless cycle of, well, who taught Flom's master and who taught Flom's master's master. So it's fine just knowing Flom is an insanely powerful mage and that's who Freerun was taught by. And she tells her you can deceive and kill your enemies by allowing them to miscalculate your strength, which is exactly what happens. I also like how we have throughout this flashback, like showing how the architecture and everything has changed over the last thousand years, like the way the buildings look, the way people dress, like it all looks very, very different. Like it almost has kind of an ancient Greece vibe here or Egyptian or something like that. And then it looks more European when we get to the modern day, uh, the modern day portion. I do think when we have that little um, water, the water bug and the other water bug on top of it, that little shot of it, it's like free run, like on her master's back, like learning from her. And it symbolically equalizes that. And so I do like the callback here where at the beginning, Fern talked about loving magic and as a child. And then when Freerun met her, she's like, do you still love magic? And she's like, well, I kind of do. And Freerun's like, for me, it's the same. And we see that Freerun kind of went through the same motions with Flom of having this magic and loving it, but then realizing kind of the burden that comes with it and still loving magic, but realizing, you know, that it's not just all sunshine and rainbows. Right. And her saying, I hate that the demons took my family and I want to exterminate every last one of them. And Flom's like me too. And it's so crazy because normally you would kind of want to criticize a character for just coming out and being so openly full of hate towards something but it's a monster, like a, a literal monster. This isn't symbolically repre representing another, you know, race of humans. No, it is a literal monstrosity that has replicated itself that Freerun thinks should be exterminated. And she's like, but I do love magic. And Flom's like, so do I. I like seeing Flom go from being like 
able to defend Freerin and attack to also like protecting the flowers. Like Flom was just a really well-rounded mage all throughout, right? And she's like, only you and I should be cowards to make a mockery of magic. If everybody starts doing it, the demons are going to catch on, right? So I need to start training you your whole life to restrain your mana and then be able to hide it. She's like, do it for, and you'll spend the rest of your life fooling the demons. And then we come back to Freerun and she has like the little smile on her face like, yes, it finally worked. And yeah, Aura didn't even, didn't know what was coming. Mm-hmm. And she grossly underestimated <laughs> how much training. The moment she was like, oh, I've been training for 500 years. I was like, well, it's half the time that Free Run's been training. So good, good times. And we see slowly. I like the idea that we see we have the discussion of class and how it's determined and how demons determine it and how it's, it's similar to humans but different. And then the difference between a noble and sneaking out in a town incognito is it the same noble debasing themselves by abandoning their their status and wealth entirely? She's like, the world of demons is cruel. They never grant dignity to those with little mana. I like that she's basically saying humans are more complex than demons. And while humans have ways of deceiving and doing runarounds and equating their statuses in different levels, with demons, it's might makes right you're either strong or you're not and if you're strong then you are successful and if you're not you're not there's no middle ground there's no complexity she's like there there's just no being a demon would be difficult for them there's no benefit to suppressing mana none at all just as humans are bound by status and wealth demons are bound by their mana interesting they can't control it themselves and then she looks at Free Run and how much she's um, changed. What's really sad is when you see her and she's older. I mean, girl kept that red hair until the end. Lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. But we go back to Flom as she's like nearing the end of her life. And she says, do you still love magic, Free Run? And Free Run's like, well, where did that come from? And she says, sure. She says, long ago, you confidently said that you loved magic. And I like that Free Run's like, that was only 50 years ago. And I wonder if Free Run is kind of being a little defensive there because she knows that Flom's getting older and she's like, mm, I don't want to acknowledge this. And what has she been training for? And she's like, yeah, you're right. And she says, in the end, all I could teach you was to fight. And it was just for magic for revenge. And then she says this line, because Freerun asks if she regrets it. And she's like, no, I'm glad I taught you how to defend yourself and to fight and get revenge on the demons. But she's like, given how long you'll live, you know, you eventually will become strong enough to defeat the Demon King, which she does. And then she says, but I have one request. And she says she wants that flowers planted around her grave. And she says, my favorite spell creates a field of beautiful flowers. Which is the spell, she says, her parents taught to her when she was little. So her parents were mages too. Makes sense. Um, that little smile that Freeman has is adorable. But now it makes sense when she makes the field of flowers around where Himmel and Hader and Isen are. It's the same spell that she learned from Flom in that moment. Mm -hmm. To do at her grave. And she's like, it's what made me love magic. And so now it makes sense. Free Run spending all this time gathering up these little odds and ends spells. It's like, it, it just the layers of the show, it adds on and on. So it's not just, it's not just Free Run gathering up the spells that remind her of her comrades. It's not just that, but it's the act of, she could go all Rambo and chase down all these demons and just go left and right and just, cause a slaughter and massacre but the downsides of that are there's a lot of demons one and two they'll fit they'll figure out who she is and then come after her and that would defeat the point so instead she's like well if i see demons i'll get rid of them one at a time um, and eventually make my way to the demon king but in order for her to keep loving magic she can't just spend her entire existence honing in this hiding her mana and honing her skills at killing demons. Instead, she has to find some way to keep the love of magic alive. And for her, it's gathering up all these little spells and doing that. And that keeps it alive for her. And I'm like, oh, 
It's so good. It's so good. The idea that Flom is like, you gotta, you gotta have a hobby, Freerun, if you're gonna keep on fighting demons. She's like, you won't leave your name in history until you defeat the Demon King. Yeah. She's like, until you defeat the Demon King, you can't let the demons know your name or they'll start researching you and they'll come after you. You've got to be strong enough to defeat the Demon King. Then they can know your name. Oh, that shot of the gravestone just there and all the flowers around it. Oh, hurts y'all. And then she goes on her way by herself. And we see her like in the snow. We see the little village where she's at. Oh, like she's just sitting there like honing her mana. It almost looks like she had steam around her with the little mana and the snowman. Oh my gosh. And then her in the cave making the food. And then she builds herself a house. The beavers are watching like, like go, go girl. <laughs> and then she has all the books that she's studying. I want to know what this big giant white thing is. It looks like Falcor off the never ending story. I want one. That thing is freaking fluffy and amazing. What? Love it. And then, yeah, as time passes, the little village ends up becoming this kingdom. So it's so sweet. The village that she stayed at for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, nearly half a millennium, it builds up to be this big, beautiful castle and kingdom. And she's just lived there like, yep, this is where I've always been. Just sitting here honing my, honing my mana. And that's when the party comes and finds her. And she's like, yep. I like that she doesn't have her full on ensemble yet. She does, and she doesn't, like the pigtails are there, but they're kind of like just now separated. They're not as separated, I don't feel, as they were uh, in the present timeline. And she says, I'm not exceptional, which is what Flom said too. So I'm like, oh girl, the, the, the student has become the teacher. And then Hyder's like, oh, well, her man is a fifth of mine. Do we think she'll work? And I love that, I love that automatically Free Ren's like, get out of here. <laughs> Who's this irritating guy? And then she's like, leave. Don't you have business? You don't have business with a mediocre mage, do you? And Himmel's like, no, you're stronger than you seem. Just a feeling. I'm like, shut up. Shut up. Himmel, you knew. Just a feeling, huh? And that's when she's like, okay, I've not been flirted with in a thousand years. I guess I'll go along with this. <laughs> I'm like, girl, if I hadn't had a hot guy come up next to me for a thousand years and then he showed up and been like, all right, I'll follow this party for a decade. What's a decade, right? No big deal. What's interesting, though, is that the party, when they find her, she did say back in episode one that they had to, like, go talk to the king and Himmel got in trouble, so... Maybe, I guess the whole issue with the king happened after the fact. Mm -hmm. I guess. I guess that all happened after the fact. Hmm. But man, this whole scene with the weighing of the souls. Mm -hmm. And Aura dragging the sword and the dirt to her. Oh, and the thing I love about the series is this series has a beautiful, a beautiful ability of restraint because you could have had you know i keep waiting for this series it, it's happened a few times with stark's character but with stark's character it makes sense but i keep waiting for this show to like have like the big it doesn't do like any other shonen where it's like the big high powered combative action scene where it's like all the choreography and everything no that ain't free rinse deal instead the show plays and sticks to its guns and it's like look free Rin is not here to be showy that's the point she doesn't want you to know about her and she does it in the most cold and brutal fashion where she finally shows off her aura and they're like just as demons deceive human kinds with words i love them in the shadows and that panel that panel with the red and white beautiful you have to use your mana to deceive the demons i love that being like otherwise they will kill you and then her scales fail. And I love that it's like, no, that's the rule. The rule is if they fail, that was the gamble that you have to do what Freerun says. And Freerun just, Freerun turning around, walking away from an explosion, turning around saying, Aura, kill yourself. That's all she has to say and that'll stop the army. This scene here where she had the sword to her throat though, and she like cuts through the hair and is like there at the neck. 
oh my god like that is absolutely terrifying like her chopping through her own hair terrifying oh my god and she's like how could i yeah and she even like tries to break the sword by not slicing her own neck oh yeah and then free run walks away and then here's this beautiful Edie by, by Millet. Ah! This show is quite deceptive. You start out being like, oh, it's free. We're in little old smut. Little, my dogs. Little old smut reading granny. Just collecting her herbs and spices, random spells. And you're like, no, she's actually a mercenary that's been a ninja hiding incognito for a thousand years. No big deal. Oh, my God. That was such a good episode. Ah! I love it. I love it to pieces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. That was that was a wonderful conclusion to this episode as well. I I wasn't sure how they were gonna conclude it. And the longer we got into the episode and the more the flashback was going on, I was kind of starting to sit on my hands, being like, are they gonna are they gonna make us wait until next week <laughs> to finish this battle? Are they gonna make us wait until there? No, it's over. It's over. So so questions I have at this point. Um, obviously Stark and Fern are probably gonna need some recuperating to do, even though Free Run's perfectly fine. I'm glad that the count is okay as well. I'm sure we'll just tidy all that up next week and do that as they, they keep heading north. My question is about the, the green haired elf. We're gonna see him maybe at some point. Um, the elf that's in the OP that's in the castle, the evil elf, he seems evil. I'm so curious. I mean, I think I realize why the demon king would want the elves dead. That seems kind of obvious, but, but. I'm curious to know, they were, uh, to me, the way the story had started out, it seemed like it made the elves seem like they were all just living like lone wolves scattered across the world. But Free Run's home suggests that they were living in like little communes at some point. So I'm curious if there are like little clusters of elves elsewhere. But I feel like there's not. I feel like the elves are all scattered and they don't live together anymore because they don't want to be a target from the demons. They don't want to be killed by the demons and be targeted. So they all just kind of go their separate ways. And maybe Free Run over time has kind of like lived out the lie of saying, yeah, we don't, we're not really into one another. We don't really get along. So that's why we're all separate. Maybe that's a lie. Maybe it's like, no, we actually aren't with other elven kind because we're, then we'd be a bigger target for the demons. So if they meet the green haired elf, that's going to be interesting to see, like, what do they do with him? I don't know. But what I do know is I'm excited to hear your comments down below. I absolutely love this episode. It was so good. That ending was like, mm -hmm, ah! so really good times. <laughs> But I, I'm excited for next week already. I can't wait, but I hope y'all had a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back very soon with more free run. Bye. I love a good flashback episode.